once again, I'm on the whiteboard. This is me, Mr. Linsangin. Uh, it's kind of fun doing these things. Now, at this point, you're probably looking at the picture and saying, hey, that's not Mr. L. Well, that is me. See the Adidas beanie? Uh, it'll make more sense now. There. Does that make sense? So today we're going to talk about something called the octet rule. Now that beginning part of the word octet should bring something to mind. Maybe an octagon like in the UFC that's eight-sided. Wait a minute. That doesn't look like an eight. Uh, let's scratch that. An eight. So that explains why October is the eighth month. Never mind. So the octet rule. It's basically the rule that states that all atoms will want to gain or lose electrons to have the same valence as noble gases. So let's go ahead and make a mock-up of the periodic table. Now we know that group one, we're going to put valence electrons in green. Now we know that group one has one, all the elements in group two have two. We're skipping all these transition metals. Then group 13 has 3, group 14 has 4, and so on. Now, I actually forgot that we're going to need an answer and respond button. Now, what group are the noble gases in? We talked about how all atoms want to have the same number of valence electrons as the noble gases. Actually answer. Good. So, group 18 are all noble gases and they mostly have eight valence electrons except for helium which has two. Now noble gases don't mix with any other in, uh, any other elements. They don't want to react with any other elements. They want to stay as is. They don't want any part to do with them. So I want you to go ahead and think of these French noblemen when you think about noble gases. French noblemen that wouldn't want to mix in with any of the peasants because they were frilly stuff. I don't want to mix in with any of the peasants because I have money. Wow, my French accent sounds like a Russian one. Please excuse that. In any case, well, let's go ahead and look at another question. Well, an ad how do you know if an atom will gain or lose electrons? It honestly just depends on what's easier to do. So let's look at oxygen. How many valence electrons does it have? Good, it has six valence electrons. Now, so let's go ahead and write this down. Oxygen. Let's section this off. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So what we need to figure out is, is it easier to go in this direction to the next noble gas by gaining two electrons? Or is it easier to go this direction to the next last noble gas and lose six? Which one is easier to do? Good, hopefully you pick gain two, because it's much easier to gain two electrons than it is to lose six. So. Let's go ahead and erase this and pick a different element. Let's go ahead and pick the element magnesium. So magnesium, hopefully you remember, it has two valence electrons because it is located right in here. So magnesium has two valence electrons. Now we need to figure out, is it easier for magnesium to go back to the be like the last noble gas by losing two electrons or is it easier to try and become like the next noble gas by gaining six electrons which one would be easier for magnesium to do you should have picked lose two electrons because that would be much easier for magnesium to do so we'll go ahead and go a little faster this time um, at least in the clip anyway so let's go ahead and pick another element. Let's pick boron. Now boron is located in group 13, so it has three valence electrons. Would it be easier for boron to go back and lose three electrons or to go this way and gain five electrons? Which one would be easier? I would hope that you would pick lose three because losing three would be much easier than gaining five. Now let's pick one last one. Let's go with carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons because it's located in group 14. Now, what do you think it would do? Would it lose four electrons or would it gain four electrons? What do you think would happen? Well, if you answered both, you would be correct because it can do either, depending on um, the elements that it's bonding with and things like that. So you guys are doing great. You guys get three stars. Ah, who cares? Let, let's give you about 10. So let's go ahead and try and visualize this um, by drawing out the atoms. So let's take sodium. We're going to do sodium chloride. 
Sodium has 11 protons and therefore has 11 electrons. The first shell can hold two, the second shell can hold eight. Well, that only makes 10, so it has to have a third shell. And in that third shell, it has one. Remember, it has one valence electron because it's in group one. Valence electrons simply mean the electrons on the outermost shell. Now, chlorine has 17 protons, therefore it has 17 electrons. Two in the first, eight in the second, and seven in the third. Okay. Chlorine, again, is in group 17, so that makes sense. It would have seven valence electrons. So we know that it would be easier for chlorine to gain one electron and sodium to lose one electron. So what happens is sodium will give its electron over to chlorine to make salt. Salt goes very good on McDonald's fries. I'm getting sidetracked. Never mind. Um, so that's what would happen. Sodium would give its electron to chlorine. By doing this, sodium can get rid of its valence electron shell and have a full outer electron shell or have a valence of a noble gas like neon and then chlorine since it gains one it'll have eight valence electrons on its outer shell to be like argon uh, let's do one more example let's do lithium fluoride now lithium fluoride can be found in things like sunglasses yeah anyways lithium is over here and lithium has three protons therefore it has three electrons two in the first shell and then one in the outermost shell because again it only has three bit three total electrons fluorine has a total of nine protons and therefore nine electrons two in the first shell and seven because it's in group 17 again seven in the outermost shell so lithium has one valence electron it would be much easier to lose one or gain seven which one's easier that's right lose one chlorine would have seven valence electrons is it easier to gain one or lose seven hopefully you chose gain one. So lithium would give its electron over to fluorine and so lithium would become like the noble gas of helium by giving its valence electron away and fluorine would become like neon by gaining one. 